One villain was terrifying because they were right. Story 1. Ken from the Bee Movie. I too would go absolutely berserk if a talking bee stole my girlfriend and gaslit me into thinking I was crazy. Hate to break it to you, but that's just the side plot. The main plot involves a bee suing all of humanity. Oh, and the third act tackles the ecological and economic impacts of losing bees as pollinators, and that bee has to acquiesce and allow his fellow bees to remain indentured servants so as to save the world. Never mind that it's native bees, not honeybees, that are the essential pollinators. Story 2. Colonel Kurtz. We train young men to drop fire on people, but their commanders won't allow them to write f on their airplanes because it's obscene. Also worth noting that most of Brando's scenes were improvised. They filmed him talking shit off the top of his head four hours at a time and used the best bits. Most of his scenes were improvised because he didn't bother to learn his lines. Dude was supposed to show up thin, even emaciated, playing a character starving himself to death like Gandhi. They wanted streetcar Brando. Instead, he never took off the weight from the Godfather for the rest of his life. Really. Didn't bother to read Heart of Darkness, didn't learn his lines, got them fed into an earwig by an assistant. This movie was the beginning of the end for Brando. Story 3. Not a true villain, but Squidward. Damn, is Spongebob an annoying neighbor and I'd hate him too. Squidward's a minimum wage worker in a monotonous day job with a boss who explicitly wants him to earn as little as possible and cuts costs everywhere, while having a musician's heart and playing his passion instrument to have some happiness and relaxing time for himself. He then proceeds to have his only time of peace and tranquility stolen from him by a loud, inconvenient neighbor who doesn't take care of his shit and makes fun of him for not being a pro at music. Most Spongebob episodes I watch nowadays have me rooting for Squidward to just murder those two morons before they induce a depression breakdown on our Squid Boy. Story 4. Count Dooku just straight up told Obi-Wan that the Sith control the Senate. Dooku is a really nuanced character. Even though he was Sith, he never fully submitted to the dark side. He also recognized the Jedi had become ineffectual at solving problems and the Republic was bloated and corrupt. He was an idealist that wanted what was best for the galaxy, even if that meant joining the nemesis of his old order. Edit. Obviously this was his original motivation and intention before he truly became an evil tyrant. I'm not saying he's a good guy or this is somehow vindicating. It's just a classic case of someone having decent intentions and screwing it up with terrible execution. Story 5. Auto from Wally. It was one of the only almost perfectly executed AI villains. He never really talks unless needed because he wasn't programmed to. No malicious motives, does everything efficiently. He's only bad because he's following his programming, protect the humans and don't let them back to earth. Not out of malicious intent, but it was what he was programmed to do. And his directive isn't even incorrect. Wally finding that plant was like finding a four-leaf clover in a field of grain. The planet was nowhere near habitable, and they barely know how to stand when they get back. In reality, you know, nobody on that axiom is going to make it very far. Story 6 I play two-player portal with my brother, and every time she insults one of us, I immediately remind him that she is trying to sow division between us, and we shouldn't let her. Honestly, the fucking funniest thing about Portal 2 is kinda left unsaid. So, the end of the multiplayer, and you find all the frozen human test subjects. DLC starts and Gladys is like, Oh, it's been 100,000 years, and all the humans are still alive. Definitely. Yep, yep, yep. And then you find out it's been a goddamn week, and all the humans are dead. It's horrifying, but so fucking funny that she tries to hide it. Story 7 General Hummel from The Rock. This is a good one. Literal terrorist, but he got sympathy from pretty much every character in the movie, including those trying to stop him. Loyal leader, made concrete demands, and never actually intended on killing anyone. So, not terrifying, but he had a point. Story 8. Magneto. He knew the hate humans had for mutants, and wasn't as blindly optimistic as Xavier. True Malcolm X of the Mutants' Rights Movement. The nations of the world spend over a trillion dollars a year on amendments. 
I intend to deny them that indulgence. The money and energy devoted now to war will be turned instead to the eradication of hunger, poverty, and disease. I offer a golden age, the like of which humanity has never imagined. Magneto Story 9. Ozymandias He outsmarted the most powerful being in the universe and won. There aren't actual flaws in his logic or execution. I'll never forget reading Watchmen back in the 90s when I was in college and getting to the part where he explains his plan and Night Owl and Rorschach are all, not if we stop you first. And he just looks at them like they're idiots, because they are. And he basically says, dude, I'm not some dumbass comic book villain telling you my master plan and giving you a chance to stop me for no reason. I already did all that shit like an hour ago and you are fucked. That was just brilliant. Story 10. None of you said the most terrifying one. Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls. He wanted to bring free energy and advanced technology to the people. In one episode, he actually did. He made the world an amazing place, and the Powerpuff Girls ruined it all. I just read his backstory. Pretty sad. The professor accidentally created him by spilling Chemical X on him. He was a lab assistant at the time. But then, after the Powerpuffs were created... The professor eventually neglected Mojo and left him to live out life on the streets. Story 11. Stevie from Wizards of Waverly Place. Her entire goal was to stop families from giving up their magic to just one person in the family. Like, we're really supposed to be rooting against her? It just seems super out of character for Alex to go against that plan. I was thinking exactly this. Why give up your powers when everyone can have them? Only one member of the family having wizard power seems unsustainable for the wizarding world. I get that it was not very nice of her to trap her brother, but she still was 100% right. I really thought Alex would do it. I cannot understand how or why did Alex double-cross her. Story 12. Roy Batty. What was done to him and his kind was wrong, and he had righteous anger. In the book, the story is very different. A lot of time is spent by Deckard contemplating what it meant to be human. At one point, he runs into a Blade Runner that is a psychopath and after an argument demands that the Voidkopf test be performed on him. Deckard finds out he is human, but he is a complete psychopath and is less human than the replicants. The story ends with Deckard killing all the replicants and getting high reward which he was using to buy a replacement animal for his wife. There is no righteous anger in the story. The opera singer replicant just gives up and lets them kill her. The final shootout with the last of the replicants is no more special or human than any pet control guy shooting some dogs that went into hiding. The story is very depressing and no one is really angry, just resigned to a fate and a system that is very inhumane. Story 13. Frankenstein's monster, Adam, created by a short-sighted, arrogant doctor as the first of his race, then denied the opportunity to be part of a community of his own man-made beings or the human community. He only became monstrous after it became clear that Frankenstein would never create another of his kind and was driven mad by his desire to punish Frankenstein's hubris. Story 14. Screen Slaver from The Incredibles 2. The monologue given during that movie regularly rings in my head. I'm sure the creepy bass robotic voice doesn't help too. The screensaver interrupts this program for an important announcement. Don't bother watching the rest. Elastigirl doesn't save the day. She only postpones her defeat. And while she postpones her defeat, you eat chips and watch her invert problems that you are too lazy to deal with. Superheroes are part of a brainless desire to replace true experience